Hello, my name's Carl. My call sign is Mike Zero Sierra Zulu Tango. And yes, it is raining sideways here. Um, <clears throat> the the plan is, and I'm determined to do this. The plan is to set up a portable satellite tracking station to test out this idea of being able to come out with R2 cloud on the Raspberry Pi and an antenna and uh, capture some passes of satellites and decode them as well as setting up a 20 meter HF station as well and so plan is two things one is to get a couple of test recordings of satellites and do a little bit of HF radio <laughs> So the plan is for the moment is just have a cup of tea and a pork pie and wait a little bit. Hopefully some of this might pass a little bit, but if not, I'm just going to have to just put my me, um, me coat on and just get out to set things up. Um, I'm actually enjoying my, um, got a new flask, so I thought, I thought I'd treat myself to a new flask for a rainy days like this i'm just going to stay in the car a bit because there's nothing worse than setting an antenna up and then getting back in the car soaking wet inside the car gets really damp you just feel really miserable and you start to wonder you know what was the point of it all <coughs> right Got a very slight break in the weather. Can you see me now? Oh, good grief. Um, so the plan is, I've got this um, this uh, antenna. It's really made for the weather satellites. So it's cut for about 137 megahertz. But you can capture um, uh, satellites up to 145. Um, frequency. I'm going to try and put this together quickly, get it in the air so we can at least get the Raspberry Pi set up with R2 Cloud. Uh, whether I'll get the um, HF antenna set up in this weather, I really don't know if it's going to be uh, possible. So I just want to get this set up and see if we can actually get some uh, level of success. I can see the camera getting soaked already just being inside the car. Sorry guys. Oh, awful. You've seen these before. This is um, the Raspberry Pi. This is a four. Uh, I've also got on here a low RA uh, shield um, because I, I run. I've got two of these: one uh, low RA one and low RA two. Uh, on this one, I'm running R two cloud, and that and that runs automatically when you power it up. It's, uh, it starts the uh, R2 cloud service and it's up and running. I've, I've also, if I wanted to, if I wanted to run this remotely, I could uh, use the LoRaR to send some of the telemetry from this one back to base or back to where I'm uh, camping or where I'm based. I've got it so that I can send the CPU temperature, CPU load, a uh, whole, whole number of um, telemetry information on how well this is performing so that uh, eventually I'll be able to put this really remotely with hardly any contact with the uh, the outside world and at least get some data to see how well it how well it's um, doing I could even attach the the logs from R2 cloud I could actually get the error logs and send send them if I get any errors so that's the plan and that's why it's got this um, little low raw shield on it and the time now is um, it's quarter past 12 so I've just got about 45 minutes to get this set up and make sure everything's working okay just to give a little bit more detail on why why I'm doing this kind of thing is that I'm, I'm really interested in <clears throat> this idea that um, even as even as amateurs you can contribute to a lot of science projects uh, and a lot of projects that involve scientific data and technology and all that kind of stuff and 
for me, the the satellites that are in the low Earth orbit um, are a very interesting um, uh, project to be involved in, as actually gathering that data and decoding it and, send, and sending that data back to the people that actually run the satellites. So in the case of uh, with the R2 cloud, you can, once you set it up, uh, you can send the data that you're decoding to a number of places. This is, this is you send it to the Satnogs community, which they will then distribute that through their systems to uh, the rightful owners of the different satellites. But also the FunCube warehouse for the FunCube project. So the data that you can decode uh, from from this, you can send to the, the, the warehouse. Quite optimistically, I brought a solar bank. So this, you can keep it charged. If I take this out, you can, you know, it's one that it rolls out quite neatly. Um, there's not much chance of uh, this charging itself up outside. I can set up a hotspot on the R Finder. So when I switch this hotspot on, doesn't matter if I've got 4G data or not. All I want to do is be able to create a, a mobile Wi-Fi in the car so I can connect the Roger Pi to it and then they can connect the, um, the Surface Pro to it. So I've just powered on the, the Wi-Fi hotspot already. Um, the low I don't know if you can see that or not. The low RAR, low RAR 2 is connected. It's given me an IP address. So with that IP address, I can use Putty on the laptop uh, to connect to the Pi and run the login to look at the logs. Uh, but also with R2 Cloud, is you can use a service called Bonjour on the computer where you type in, you can type in a browser and the host name, whether that's Raspberry Pi if you've not changed it, but in my case, I've changed the host name of the Pi to at low, low R2. And with R2 Cloud, you can then uh, actually go to the configuration, and that's what we'll do now. We'll actually go to the configuration and make sure everything is working. And you do that by the hotspot provides you the connection between the two devices. Let's find the lat long position we're at, and then I'll just make sure that I've got 4G, so I'm, I feel quite uh, lucky with that. Uh, I've got about 20, 20 odd minutes left. So let's just go to uh, my lat long. So um, what I'll do now is I'll just go and check. I'm just going to run some of these schedules and see what we get. Uh, see if there's anything between 1300 and 1400. Um, what's the wrong frequency? I just want to work on um, anything that's got 145 or 137 in it. I will see what pops up. Uh, any any of them that are outside the one hour window I've got out I'll just remove from the schedule All right so the, there's only one pass that I've got I thought I I had two passes but I've only I've got one pass that is oh, let's try that one oh I've got I've got two I've got two passes so in the meantime, I'm going to try and brave it and put up a HF antenna while the weather is um, half decent. Right, I've got to be honest with you, uh, that was utterly frustrating. An awful experience putting this simple antenna up. The, uh, the grass here uh, has basically got hardcore underneath it so you can't get the pegs in oh, it's been so long since I've done any of this that I'm completely out of practice I'm not sure if that's level or not I'll, I'll fix it in post keeping an eye on that antenna it's wobbling about a bit with the uh, really dodgy looking guys that I've put on it but hopefully um, Everywhere soaked. 
it's not a glamorous life being a uh, ham radio small time ham radio youtuber with 5,000 fantastic followers it's not glamorous whatsoever Yankee, this is HP9 TV or Papa Jim Okay, Delta uh, Juliet Right, so when I when I log into uh, R2 server, I've actually I've I've got two recordings. They've both been uploaded now because of the 4G on the uh, R Finder. I can see um, on the Delphi there's a, a little bit of data on that one, a little bit of a signal in that one, and uh, what else is the the flurry. And not that much showing in that particular pass. Uh, it does work. I can get uh, satellite recordings remotely or portable. Um, I on a better day, I, I would probably spend more more hours and get quite a number of passes. <clears throat> Mike Zero Sierra Zulu Tango. Mike Zero, Sierra Zulu Tango. Oh, that was an easy one to copy. Oscar Zulu 8, Kilo Whiskey. Okay, okay, uh, one moment. So the, uh, any KRP station, any KRP station or mobile station, portable station? At Mike Zero, Sierra Zulu Tango, QRP. Mike Zero, Sierra Zulu Tango. Mike Salad, bro, off of Charlie Tango. Still is very cold. There we go. So that was a partial success. I'm not sure how good the signals are. It all depends on the type of pass and, and all. There's so many. Uh, things can affect the signal, not necessarily the setup here. Done what I came here to do, which is the uh, satellite recordings. The HF was only sort of a, a play thing as well. I think I enjoyed it. It's better than staying indoors for four months or longer. So uh, compared to that, it's fantastic. So I thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope some of that was useful. I hope some of it was enjoyable. If you have enjoyed the video, can you give us a like, a thumbs up, and if you've not yet subscribed and you are liking what you see, can you hit the subscribe button? It really helps. And I look forward to the next video. So bye bye for now.